Hello everyone, welcome back. And today I'll be talking about developmental disturbances affecting the size, number, and growth of the teeth. So let's start with the developmental disturbances affecting the size of the teeth. Under this, we have microdontia and macrodontia. Now let's see what is microdontia. With the name itself, we can make out that micro means small and dontia means teeth. Microdontia as in whole means small teeth. Let's look into its definition. It's a developmental condition in which one or more teeth appear smaller than normal, as we have already discussed. Now let's look into the causes. It causes of microdontia are Down syndrome and ectodermal dysplasia. When it comes to causes, one thing we should make very clear is all the developmental disturbances affecting oral and paraoral structures are either associated with genetic condition or systemic condition. Mostly, these developmental disturbances are generalized. Now, coming to the classification or the types of microdontia, there are two types of microdontia that is generalized and localized. Generalized microdontia or generalized pathological condition affecting the size, number, growth of teeth are always associated with either genetic, uh, genetic conditions or systemic condition. Under generalized microdontia, we have true generalized microdontia and relative generalized microdontia. Now let's look into the differences between all different types of microdontia. The first, my, the, the first type of microdontia which we are going to talk today is true generalized microdontia. Okay, in this in this type of microdontia, the, there is a normal size, normal jaw size, but the teeth are smaller. As you can see over here in this picture, the jaw is normal in size, but the teeth are abnormally small. Hence, it's known as true generalized microdontia. Now, coming to relative generalized microdontia. Relative generalized microdontia is a condition in which normal or slightly small teeth are present in larger than normal jaws, which means that it gives an illusion of microdontia, which means, as you can see in this picture, it's giving an illusion of microdontia because the it it had the patient suffering with this has got micrognathia, like which means large jaws. Now coming to the third type of microdontia that is localized microdontia, it is a it involves only a single tooth or maybe one or two teeth. It does not generalize, hence its name localized. And usually the peck shaped labral are a classic example of localized microdontia. Now, coming to another type of developmental disturbance affecting the size of the teeth is macrodontia. With the name, we know that macro stands for large and dontia stands for teeth. Large macrodontia as in whole stands for large teeth. Now, let's look into its definition. It is a condition in which teeth are larger than normal, as we've already discussed. Now, let's, go, let's see the causes of macrodontia. The first cause of macrodontia is disturbances in morphodifferentiation. Now, what do you understand by the term morphodifferentiation? Morphodifferentiation refers to morphogenesis of the enamel organ. This is that stage in the formation of, uh, in the development of the tooth bud, wherein there is folding of the inner enamel epithelium, giving a shape to the future tooth. Difference, disturbances at that stage, that is morphodifferentiation, when morphogenesis is happening, results in localized or single tooth or one or two teeth macro, macrodontia. Now coming to the next cause is pituitary gigantism. Pituitary gigantism, as we know, is a systemic condition. It results in generalized true macrodontia. Okay, now coming to the third uh, third cause of macrodontia, it's Pyer-Robin syndrome and cleidocranial dysplasia. Both of these syndromes are genetic disorders. In cleidocranial dysplasia, is a skeletal dysplasia. It's also known as a skeletal dysplasia, wherein there there is abnormality in the collarbone, or maybe the collarbone could be absent. In either of these cases, the, the jaw is relatively small, that is microgognathia. Hence, 
The macrodontia associated with this condition is relative generalized macrodontia. Okay, now let's see the types of macrodontia. We have true generalized macrodontia, relative generalized macrodontia, and single tooth macrodontia. The true generalized macrodontia is a teeth are larger than normal with the normal jaw size. This is characteristically seen in Pichichiri gigantism. Now coming to relative generalized macrodontia, as we already says, discussed in the previous uh, developmental disturbances affecting the size of the teeth that was microdontia, that relative is always means to illusion, illusion of a certain condition. So relative generalized macrodontia is an illusion of macrodontia, wherein there is abnormally small sized jaws, such as like micrognathia, which is a characteristic feature of cleidocranial dysplasia and Pyrobin syndrome. Now coming to single tooth macrodontia. This is a, this is a typical uh, macrodontia which is most commonly seen in hemihypertrophy of face which is a rare disorder. Hemihypertrophy with the name itself suggests hemi means half, hypertrophy means enlarged. Okay, hemihypertrophy means Half of the facial tissues are enlarged. So in such condition, one or two teeth on that side of the face which has been affected appear to be enlarged. Hence the name single tooth or localized macrodontia as you can see over here. The two centrals are excessively enlarged compared to other part, other teeth in the oral cavity. This should never be confused with fusion or toronontism. I'll provide the link below. Now coming to the next developmental disturbances affecting the number of teeth. Under this category, we are going to study about anodontia, supernumerary teeth, pre-decidious dentition that is natal and neonatal teeth. You have already studied this in your first year. And then you have post-permanent dentition. Now coming to anodontia with the name ano means absence and dontia means teeth. Anodontia means absent teeth. Now let's look into its definition. Anodontia is a rare genetic disorder characterized, characterized by congenital absence of all primary or permanent teeth due to true failure of odontogenesis. In this definition, what is most important is congenital absence. The teeth are not at all present the patient system, the patient's metabolism fails to develop teeth, fails to form teeth, results in true anodontia. Okay, now let's come coming to the etiology and causes of anodontia. We have ectodermal dysplasia and we have mesoectodermal dysplasia. Now, ectodermal dysplasia is not a single disorder, it's a combination of genetic dis syndromes. All the structures which has been derived from the ectoderm or the first layer of primary or first primary germ layer, they are affected such as hair, teeth and mesoectodermal dysplasia. In mesoectodermal dysplasia, all the structure which has been derived from mesoderm, ectomesenchyme or ectoderm are affected. Like they are, there is a faulty development or absence of development of structures derived from these primary germ layers. Now, anodontia should never be confused with false anodontia and pseudo-anodontia. Now, what is false anodontia? False anodontia is extraction, okay? Uh, and if extraction of permanent teeth is, is false anodontia as well as extraction of primary teeth, which accidentally involves the removal of Permanent tooth part, even that falls under the category of false anodontia. Now, what is pseudo anodontia is embedded or impacted teeth which fail to erupt because of various reasons, which we'll be discussing in the further part of our lecture. Now, let's discuss the types of anodontia. We have true generalized anodontia, true partial anodontia, under true partial anodontia. We have hypodontia and oligodontia. The true partial anodontia is further classified based on the number of teeth which are absent. So let's see what is hypodontia. Hypodontia is one 
it said if, if one or more permanent teeth are absent if if in this picture as you can see the laterals are absent hence it's known as hypodontia if there are six or more number of permanent teeth absent then you call it as oligodontia as you can see in this picture there are more number of teeth like more than six number of six to more than six number of teeth are absent hence is known as oligodontia now coming to true generalized anodontia it is typical feature of ectodermal dysplasia as we had already discussed wherein you won't see any any set of human dentition neither primary nor permanent okay that is a true generalized on anodontia where because of systemic factors or genetic factors the patient's metabolism fail to develop or form teeth okay now coming to next developmental disturbances affecting the number of teeth we have supernumerary teeth with the name itself we know super means increased numerary means number so supernumerary means increased number of teeth now let's look into its definition it's an existence of excessive number of teeth compared to the normal dental formula as we have already discussed now let's look come to the causes of supernumerary teeth a third tooth bud or an accessory tooth bud arriving from the same dental lamina or splitting of the permanent tooth bud which is also known as dichotomy or hyperactivity of dental lamina wherein the dental lamina extends and gives rise to excessive number of teeth okay now coming to its clinical features it closely resembles teeth of the group to which it belongs that is molars anteriors or premolars now let's look into the conditions in which most commonly you see supernumerary teeth one syndrome one condition is cardner syndrome this is a very important condition as soon as you hear the word supernumerary teeth gardner syndrome is something which is click your mind first okay now i'll first discuss gardner syndrome then i'll proceed to other conditions so gardner syndrome it's a it is associated with multiple polyposis of large intestine osteomas of bone sebaceous cyst okay desmoid tumors and impact is supernumerary supernumerary and permanent teeth is as soon as you hear the word gardner syndrome you should always remember swelling or growth because this syndrome is associated with different type of growths like osteomas of bone cyst tumors like desmoid tumors poly multiple polyps of large intestine so gardner syndrome associated with different swelling or tumor like growth along with impacted supernumerary teeth now coming to next condition associated with supernumerary teeth is cleft lip and cleft palate cleft lip and cleft palate in this condition how does supernumerary teeth affect as while the clefting is proceeding it pass through the developing tooth bud resulting in formation of supernumerary teeth and then we have cleidocranial dysplasia okay is and again is a genetic disorder now let's look into the classification or types of supernumerary teeth this classification is based on the shape of supernumerary teeth based on the shape they have been divided into conical tuberculate and supplemental tooth uh, supernumerary teeth now let's look into what is a conical supernumerary teeth it's also known as peck shaped as you can see over here these are is a, a, a good example of conical supernumerary teeth is mesiodents as you can see there are two central incisors okay between which we have a peck shaped or conical structure that is nothing but a supernumerary teeth it's also known as mesiodents it is arising between the two central incisors the next type of tuber supernumerary teeth is tuberculate supernumerary teeth the this word tuberculate is derived from the word tubercle tubercle is an accessory cusp or an abnormal cusp which is not usually present is known as a tubercle so tuberculate supernumerary teeth is a supernumerary teeth arising it's most commonly seen uh, paired 
behind the central in central permanent incisors as you can see over here it gives a false appearance of it gives an appearance of a false cusp okay so this is a tuberculate supernumerary teeth now coming to the third type of supernumerary teeth that is supplemental supernumerary teeth this this supplemental supernumerary teeth it resembles normal permanent tooth which is a, a good example for this is paramolar and it's usually present at the end of the series of the, that type of teeth so these are the three different types of supernumerary teeth classified based on the, their shapes and the areas where they are occurring okay now coming to the next developmental disturbances affecting the number of teeth is pre-deciduous dentation with the name itself we know that is the dentation before the first set of human dentition that is the primary or deciduous dentition it's also known as premature eruption natal teeth and neonatal teeth okay now coming to his definition these are hornified epithelial structures without roots okay hornified epithelial structure mean thickened epithelial structure without root if the causes of this is they arise from accessory bud or an extra bud from of dental lamina or accessory dental lamina now the two types of pre-deciduous dentition are natal teeth are the teeth which are present at the time of birth you already know this you have already studied in dental anatomy and dental histology and neonatal teeth are the teeth which erupt within the first 30 days after birth okay now coming to post permanent dentition in it's what is it is in at times in old patients complete denture patient whom we call complete denture patient with a com there is a complete absence of teeth okay in such patient if you take the radiograph you do at times see impacted teeth that is nothing but the third human dentition and that's abnormal that's pretty rare to find let's look into what it is it's a multiple supernumerary unerupted teeth okay are thought to develop from a bud of the dental lamina beyond the permanent tooth jump so it it could occur because of some systemic conditions like calcium metabolism okay and it's not pretty often now coming to the next developmental disturbances affecting the teeth is we are going to get discuss about the growth of the teeth developmental disturbances affecting the growth of the teeth under this category we are going to talk about premature eruption as we have already studied earlier that Pre-deciduous dentition is also known as premature eruption. Eruption sequence from delayed eruption, multiple unerupted teeth, embedded and impacted teeth, and ankylosed deciduous teeth. Okay. Now let's look into what is premature eruption as we have already discussed this. Let it's an eruption of teeth occur before the normal eruption time. Okay. It could happen if it's happening in primary teeth, it's uh, natal and neonatal teeth. It can even happen in permanent teeth. And if it's happening in permanent teeth, it is due to secretion of or disturbances in the endocrine uh, in the systemic condition caused by excessive secretion of endocrine organs like thyroid, adrenals, and gonads. Types natal, neonatal, and as well as in permanent. We have already discussed natal and neonatal teeth and permanent teeth if there are certain certain different disturbances in the secretion of the endocrine organs that is thyroid, adrenal, and gonads. It results in premature eruption or early eruption of teeth in permanent teeth. Now, the next developmental condition affecting the growth of the teeth is eruption sequestrum. Now, what is eruption sequestrum? It's a tiny irregular spicule of bone. As you can see over here, this is a tiny irregular spicule of bone overlying the crown of an erupting permanent molar. This is very important. As soon as you hear the words eruption sequestrum, you should always remember that it affects in permanent teeth, erupting permanent molars. Okay. And not in primary molars. This is characteristically seen by the eruption of permanent molars, not primary molars. This is something you should 
remember you know we all will remember yeah it's a bony spicule which comes before the eruption but we forget it's it's associated with which part of dentition like primary or secondary so it's always the permanent dentition in which eruption sequestrum can occur now how does eruption sequestrum occur is the, when the molars are erupting permanent molars are erupting they usually separate a small osseous as you can see over here there's a this is a bone this is gum soft tissues and this is teeth it's erupting as they are erupting this sep this eruption eruptive force or the way the uh, molars are erupting they separate a small osseous fragment okay this was a complete osseous segment and they separated it okay because of the eruption they got separated okay and uh, it, it this usually should get uh, uh, resolved okay but if the if this uh, this has been separated into a large pony spicule or if the eruption rate is fast only then it doesn't get time to get re resolved this bony spicule doesn't get time to get resolved hence it results in eruption sequestrum which is this okay i hope you have understood this well coming to the next developmental disturbances affecting the growth of the teeth is delayed eruption delayed eruption is the associated with systemic condition like rickets cretinism or hypothyroidism cleidocranial dysplasia hypopituitarism and down syndrome among all these the cleidocranial dysplasia and the down syndrome are both genetic disorders okay whereas the rickets the cretinism of hypothyroidism or hypopituitarism are all systemic conditions okay they are caused by improper uh, metabolism or metro the disturbances in the metabolism of a human they are caused by disturbances in the metabolism of a human being resulting in delayed eruption now local factors are fibromatosis fibromatosis gingivae this is a condition in which the gum overlying gum gets excessively thickened due to excessive fibrous deposit in it or excess fibrous growth in it causing or hindering the tooth eruption this is one uh, one local factor re responsible for delayed eruption apart from this most of the time delayed eruption is always associated with either genetic condition or systemic conditions now coming to the developmental disturbances affecting the growth of the teeth that is embedded teeth impacted teeth and multiple unerupted teeth we'll discuss all of these in detail the first is embedded teeth embedded teeth remain unerupted due to lack of eruptive forces like the tooth will not have eruptive forces to grow into the mouth then it's known as embedded teeth if the tooth is lacking eruptive forces it's known as embedded teeth when it is known as impacted teeth when the eruption of the teeth is prevented by some physical barriers in eruption and such physical barriers are lack of space due to crowding of teeth premature loss of deciduous teeth causing again the lack of space because of the, the the teeth have drifted in that area rotation of tooth but causing change in the angulation of the long axis of the tooth If the eruption path has been changed if the eruption eruption path has been changed and if there is a lack of space and there is no space for tooth to erupt then is known as impacted teeth remember one thing when it come to impacted teeth the tooth has got eruptive forces in them it's just that they are deviated or there there is some physical barrier because of which they are not able to erupt the eruption is hindered whereas in embedded teeth you see there is a lack of eruptive forces in the tooth okay so lack of eruptive forces around the tooth not now coming to multiple erupted teeth is also known as pseudoanodontia as we have already said it discussed this that pseudoanodontia was unerupted teeth or impacted teeth is known as pseudoanodontia whereas false anodontia was extraction extraction is known as uh, false and the false anodontia yep now these are the uh, 
different types of impacted teeth like uh, different based on on their relation with the adjacent tooth the impacted teeth have been divided into vertical impaction that there's vertical straight compared to the else adjacent tooth horizontal impaction that is the, the impacted tooth is horizontal in association with the adjacent teeth mesoangular impaction the uh, tooth is tilted mesoangularly angularly come uh, with the adjacent tooth and distoangular impaction the tooth is tilted distoangul distally compared to the adjacent tooth these are different types of uh, impacted teeth based on their orientation or based on their location with the adjacent tooth now coming to the last developmental disturbances affecting the growth of the teeth is ankylosed deciduous teeth it's also known as a submerged teeth now why does it known as a submerged teeth is because turbans affect mostly the molars the last molars in the primary dentition and it occurs it gives the tooth a, sunk, a sunken effect because the root of the tooth has undergone a variable degree of resorption okay and then the remaining root has been fused with the surrounding bone giving it a sunken appearance way lower than the normal occlusal plane okay hence it's known as a submerged teeth i hope you all enjoyed this lecture in my next lecture i'll be talking about the developmental disturbances affecting the structure of the teeth that is amelogenesis imperfecta dentinogenesis imperfecta and many others thank you have a nice day